This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Uh, this is the fourth lecture on the chapter on um, discounted cash flow techniques. I said it was a, uh, there was a lot in this chapter. Uh, and the next bit of the uh, notes, as you'll see, uh, is headed up inflating perpetuities. Now, you should know what a perpetuity is. It's where you're expecting a cash flow each year at forever, uh, which, of course, uh, in most cases in the exam, when you're appraising a project, like we were in the earlier examples, uh, is unlikely. Generally, when it's project appraisal, we're looking over a fixed time period, maybe over four years, over five years, or, or whatever it is. However, here, we're looking at something which gives a cash flow every year forever. And it does occur in the exam. I'll tell you the most likely place it will occur. If we were acquiring a new company, we're going to get extra cash flows just as we do the project. But of course, if you're acquiring a new company, rather than just expecting flows for the next three, four, five years, you will be expecting, or more likely be expecting, cash flows forever. And so that's the situation we've got here. And as to how we deal with it, uh, I'll explain with uh, an, the example. First of all, example five. In example five, cash flows have been forecast at 5,000 a year in perpetuity. <coughs> Excuse me. And if that was the end of it, that would be easy. An equal amount each year. Uh, but we're told the cash flows are inflating at 4% a year. And that's what creates the problem. That you see um, in this 5,000 at current prices, in one year, do 5,000 plus 4%. In two years, 5,000 plus another 4%. Three years, another 4%, and so on. Uh, we can't discount in the normal way. We want to discount at the cost of capital of here 20%. Uh, you can do this in more than one way, to be honest. But uh, by far the easiest way, the way the examiner tends to do it, not that that matters, but by far the easiest way is to use, in fact, something we did look at earlier, um, the formula on the formula sheet, the growth model. Now, on the formula sheet, you've got the growth model. P0 is D0 times 1 plus G over RE minus G. And usually, this is used for valuing shares. Now, the P0 is the market value of a share. D0 is the current dividend. Uh, G is the dividend growth rate per annum. And RE is the shareholder's required return per annum. So the formula as it stands really is for valuing shares, but remember. The market value of the share is the present value of future dividends. And here we want the present value, not of dividends, obviously, but of the cash flows. Well, we can use exactly the same formula. Uh, P0 is the present value that we're after. D0, instead of being the dividend, is the current price cash flow. Uh, divi uh, uh, G, rather than dividend growth rate, it is the growth rate, it's the inflation rate. And finally, RE. Well, when we're valuing shares, we discount at the shareholder's required return. Uh, when it's uh, uh, value valuing cash flows, RE becomes the discount rate which, of course, here is the cost of capital of 20%. And so we use exactly the same formula, and it's then simply the sticking the figures in. So for this one, 
The present value, which is what we require. The current price flow is 5,000. Uh, the growth rate, the inflation rate is 4%, so times 1.04. Over the discount rate, the cost of capital, 20%, minus the inflation rate, 4%. And it's then just straight calculator work. What do we get? 5,000 times 1.04 divided by 0 0.16. I get 32,500. So, nice and easy, All right, just sticking figures in the formula. All right, that's perhaps slightly too easy, and we could make it a little bit more complicated. So I'll use the same principle. Look at example six with me. Well, it is a tiny bit more interesting. Again, we want the present value of the cash flows, but this time they've been forecast as an actual 5,000 in the first year, an actual 6,000 in the second, an actual 7,000 in the third, but then thereafter, it's going into perpetuity. Thereafter, we're going to get 7,000 a year forever, but inflating at 5%. So let's set it up. What are the cash flows? Well, in one year's time, no problem. We're expecting 5,000. In two years' time, no problem. We're expecting 6,000. Uh, in three years' time, no problem. 7,000. But from then on, so from four to infinity, we've got the 7,000 plus inflation. We need the present value of the flows. Well, the first three, of course, are easy. Straight discounting. At 20%, the discount factor for one year is 0.833. For two years, is 0.694. For three years, 0.579. And so the present values, 5,000 times 0.833, 4165. Second year, 6,000 times 0.694. 4164, and the third year, 7,000 times 0 0.579, 4053. So there, nothing new, no problem. The problem comes, this inflating perpetuity. And be very careful here with the, the timings, listen to me carefully. Had it been 1 to infinity, there'd have been no problem. It would be just like example five with different numbers. 7,000 at current prices, but at the time, in one year, 7,000 plus 5% uh, inflation in two years, plus two years at 5% and so on. And had it been one to infinity, then just like before, we'd have said present value, 7,000 at current prices, uh, one, times 1.05 over 0.2 minus 0.05, which gives us 49,000. I think I'm right, 49,000. And had it been 1 to infinity, end of story. The problem is, though, it is 7,000 inflating in perpetuity, but instead of starting in one year's time, it starts in four years' time. Now, had it been one to infinity, 49,000 would be the present value now. But it isn't one to infinity, it's four to infinity, it's starting three years later. Time four instead of time one. And so the present value we get will be three years later as well. Instead of that being the present value now, time zero, it'll be the present value in three years' time. Present value at time three. Well, of course, I want the present value now. 
If it's 49,000 in three years' time, how can I get the present value now? Well, we need to discount for three years in the normal way. Three years at 20%. And what's a discount factor? For 20% three years, it's 0.579. And so the present value now, which is what we're after, is 28371. And now we're fine. Remember, we'd already worked out the present value of the first three flows. And now know the present value of the 4 to infinity is 28371. And therefore, the total present value, add them together, 4165, 4164, 4053, and 28371. It's 40,753. And there we are. So, a small bit, and as always, this will be just one bit of a much longer question, lots of other things to worry about. But as far as the actual discounting is concerned, there we are. And as I've said, we will effectively look at that again later because the most likely place you'll be dealing with this sort of inflating perpetuity is when you're valuing a company, perhaps when you're acquiring a company. All right, we're almost there, uh, but there's one more topic to, to deal with to finish this chapter. It's completely separate, so we'll have one final lecture on this chapter.